Hello, Richard. How you doing? I'm doing excellent. And you? I'm doing fine. Thank you. Welcome to Free Market News. As I said earlier, you are an irrigation specialist. You've seen all kinds of bad lawns, dying flowers, bushes, dried up greenery. What are people doing wrong? Bad sprinkler systems. They hire the wrong people unintentionally. They may be overwatering their sprinklers, not watering conservatively. Overwatering is not a good thing. They may not be paying attention until a dry spell comes along, like now, and now everything starts to look dry, and they call. But sometimes they don't get it fixed properly because they have the wrong people doing it. So I would say that's what they're not doing right. They're not hiring the right people to do the right job to have a healthy landscape. Most people think sprinkler heads are just those small green things you buy at Home Depot, and and that's the sum total of sprinkler heads. You being an irrigation specialist, sprinkler heads have turned into kind of a science, haven't they? It's very technical, and there are over 35 to 40 different spray nozzle tips that go on the head. The year when we started in 1970, we used to have a half, a full, and a quarter pattern, and maybe a three-quarter. Now, we have over 40 patterns, and most of these nozzles, they're called match precipitation rate nozzles, MPRs, and a lot of them are designed to conserve water, to cover the areas that they need to cover. Not a lot of overspray onto the sidewalks, the streets, the cars, the walls. Everything is all contained and controlled if you do the proper design. So if someone's using their sprinklers and they notice that their driveway is full of water and down by the street's full of water, problem. They're wasting a lot of that, yeah, and they're spending a lot of money if it's a city water system. Their their water bills are going through the roof. And you specialize in water conservation, which saves somebody money. Yes, we do. We have brought people's water bills down anywhere from 20 to 50 percent lower on a water bill per month. In South Florida, lots of people have canal systems. Canals and lakes. What are some of the do's and don'ts with that? If you have a canal, if you have a system drawing water from a canal or a lake, you have a lake stream in the water. Now, you know what algae does? It builds up a corrosion, and it cakes onto the screen, and it builds up around all the holes on the screen, and it prevents water flowing through the system. It could also burn out a pump if you don't take care and service that screen every so often. Now, every canal or lake is different, but most of them will corrode and build up algae and cause a problem in the sprinkler system where you won't have any prime on the pump or you'll have low volume coming through. And that's because the screen is clogged up and needs to be changed. Those long pipes that you put into a canal. It's known as a C-valve. Am I correct on that? The pipe that goes into the canal, is a, that's a PVC pipe with a check valve on it. Check valve. That's what I meant, a check valve. And the check valves can get can be defective if the screen is defective or, or wore out. Is it ever possible for a check valve to leak and water comes out of your system in case, like, somebody's always losing prime on their in their sprinkler system? Can a check that's, valve yeah. break? Yes, that always happens when a lake screen goes bad. And the check valve, it will, instead of it holding water on the, towards the house side, towards the pump, it allows the water to flow through the check valve back into the canal. And that's when you lose your prime. Yeah, yeah. And, and losing it's prime. Sort of like, uh, it's sort of like a finger on a straw in a glass. When you put your finger over that straw and you lift it up out of that glass, the water stays in that straw. That's the pipe. If you lift your finger as if there was some debris underneath your finger, that water would all run back into that glass as the canal. Now, if you're just tuning in, we're talking to Richard Levine from Waterboy Sprinklers. Richard is an irrigation specialist, and he works in the free market. And, Richard, one thing about free market news, we always talk about personal responsibility and ethics. What are some of your ethic and personal responsibility stories on how you conduct yourself number one professionalism fixing only what the problem is not guessing and doing guesswork being honest with the client you know i find that 
if I just fix what needs to be fixed and I take care of the problem, I make a customer for life. If they need a pump next time or later in the future, they're going to call me because I fixed their problem the first time. And I didn't look to do things that weren't necessary. Like another individual had come out to one of my clients and went out to the house and told this uh, customer that you need a time clock. Well, the customer was very leery about the person because he told her also that, well, I'm not sure if you need that. If we put that in and it still doesn't work, then we need to put a pump in. Well, at that point, I was told that the customer asked the individual to leave the property. So I came out to the property to troubleshoot the same problem, and I found no power going to the time clock. You can't tell somebody that the time clock is bad if it's not receiving any power. So I immediately got out of voltage tester. I checked the power. I found the source of power disconnected in the main panel, reconnected that power source, went back outside, and not only was the cl clock working, the pump was working. So I just made a new friend. You and sure? then that customer had since hired me to redo all their sprinklers after that. That's a typical, honest, and ethical and professional situation that we do every day. If all businesses did that, for the big corporations and how about pharmaceutical companies? Don't you think it would be a, a better world that would need less regulation? If they were honest about that and looked out for the customer's well-being, yeah, it would be a better place. But unfortunately, you have a lot of charlatans and you have a lot of shysters out there that are looking for that quick buck and not looking for that the proper job to be done to service the customer ongoing in the future. I don't look to gouge people. I look to do what's needed to be done. How long have you been in business, Richard? Since 1970. And what is your inspiration? One of the things you use to remind yourself about good ethics. It's called the importance of a customer. A customer is our most important visitor. He is not dependent on us. We are dependent on him. He is not an interruption of our work. He is the purpose of it. He is not an outsider to our business. He is part of it. We are not doing him a favor by servicing him. He is doing us a favor by giving us the opportunity to do so. Bravo. That's a good thing to go by. Nothing happens in business without a sale and a customer. They're like part of your family after a while. You, if you don't have those people in your business, you don't have a business. You follow what I'm saying? Got to take care of them. So... That's a company statement that I gave. And as you know, follow-up. After you do a job, a lot of companies disappear, but that's not your situation, is it? No. Matter of fact, when we do a job for someone and we charge them money and we do the job for them and give them a one-year unconditional warranty on the work, we're always there to help them if something goes wrong. And not only that, when we go out on a customer that we just took care of on a complete job that we've done, whether it's a revamp or what have you, or a complete overhaul in their system, if there's something else that happened that's really unrelated to the work that we did, we most of the time don't charge extra because it's a good will and a good, good ethics to do that for a client. I've had people write things on the Internet about the fact that I came back on an unrelated issue and I came back quickly, and I didn't charge for the, for the call. I just want to make my customers happy, and I don't want them to have to call anybody else. I want to be the one-stop shop for everything they need irrigation, and I love their recommendations that they give. And they will give a lot. Of, that's what's kept us alive in the last 50 years, good customer recommendations, and that's what we strive for. Richard, thank you so much for being on Free Market News. Well, thanks for having me.